just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. So it's a new day and Chili got himself a new lawyer. Christopher Oram, a 25 year criminal law specialist. That's only five years more experience than Chili has. But if committing serious crime in Vegas is your thing, give Oram a call. I wonder how Chili's paying for this lawyer since the GoFundMe may have just been frozen for fraud. Oh well, let's look at this pile of steaming legal stuff anyway. Chili's now applying for bail or being released on his own recognizance. Nevada, when you appeal a case, you can get out on bail. It's a bit harder, but can be done. This doesn't mean his appeal is going through just yet. Yep, his appeal motion goes right back to the same judge. Sometimes you just gotta enjoy the rules. He only has 10 more days to try and sneak that appeal past Judge Zimmerman or apply directly to the Ninth Circuit to get around her. Guess which one Chili's gonna likely try. As you can see in the motion, Chili's right back on the stick of having his constitutional rights violated. But in typical Chili legal fashion, this motion makes absolutely no mention of which right was actually violated, or even hints at which one. I would think telling the court would be kind of important to getting this to work. Chili had mentioned the First and Fourth Amendments during the trial, so those really are the only violations he can appeal on. Kind of think this motion may be heading for a swift rejection for just a few issues, like this next page of interesting fantasy. First is, Chili has no prior convictions, no criminal record. For a person who doesn't have a criminal record, he sure does have a rather long list of things that end in guilty. Let's take a quick look. Chili just got convicted on obstruction resisting, but since he's appealing, let's go look at the other stuff. Oh, well, he's facing another obstruction and false ID charge on Monday, April 1st, which if it gets noticed by the judge, isn't a good thing. Wonder who'll be the April Fool then. Uh-oh. City of Oregon still has an active open warrant for telecom harassment. Evidently, someone was making nasty phone calls, it seems. City of Ironton also has an open active warrant for Chile for failure to appear. LA County Court charged Chile with criminal threats, but the case stalled for some reason. Now here's a biggie. California Superior Court, possession and manufacturing of a narcotic. Guilty plea with deferral to a program. And then, kind of suspiciously, records were sealed, almost like he snitched out someone and they hid that. State of Texas, another warrant, failure to appear. For not wearing a flotation device and failure to show a driver's license. Mind you, this was Texas, so it would probably be hard time there, or at least a $25 fine. State of Oregon versus DeCastro, a West warrant expired. State of Oregon versus DeCastro, guilty, giving false information to police. State of Oregon arrest warrant, warrant quashed four years later. State of Oregon theft in the second degree, guilty. Warrant issued then later quashed. State of Oregon stalking, guilty. Warrant issued then later recalled. State of Alaska warrant, failure to appear. No valid driver's license, eventually pled no contest, aka guilty but I really can't refute the evidence. State of Alaska, no driver's license, guilty. Now you may have noticed that that was seven arrest warrants with two still being active, six guilty conviction pleas, and a couple of we don't care anymore by the courts. I wonder if the judge will be able to figure those out, as he will get full access to all the records, sealed or not. Remember when Chili was so upset when he went after Tate and the judge read out his non-existent record in court while he was live streaming after just telling the judge he wasn't live streaming? Yeah, it looks going to go over just as well as that did. I mean, what are you going to believe? What the records say or what Chile is telling you to believe? These appeal bonds tend to be bigger compared to pre-trial bonds. And the big question is, what bail company in their right mind would want to cover it for someone who's had seven warrants issued to them for not bothering to show up? Makes you wonder if Chile was thinking of paying GoFundMe cash and then doing a dash. After all, it's not his money. And there are a few other things on this that really don't add up. Like the loving family. I thought none of them talked to him anymore, even his mother. Or this bit about living in Nevada since 1999. Yet he just declared to the California court a few months ago his residence was in LA. Or is LA in Nevada now? I'm not sure. Then we have some good fantasy stuff about Chile owning and operating three businesses and employing up to nine imaginary people. That's actually three web pages and the same t-shirts he's had for the last four years 
being dragged around in the back of the Honda and being used as blankets. And then we have Chili volunteering out of the goodness of his soul as a kid's wrestling coach. Of course, Chili wants to appeal to two misdemeanors, ultimately returning to his family and to carry on the responsibilities of a small business owner. Yeah, I'm trying not to cough or laugh at that. And the last page really, really shows the desperation by asking the judge to grant Chili a reasonable bail, or maybe even release on his own recognizance with just a high level electronic monitoring device. I don't know, with Chili's totally non existent criminal record and having to get the appeal past Zimmerman, I have some slight doubts. Oh, did I mention it would be 12 to 18 months before the appeal might even be heard? That is, if it isn't outright rejected, like about 95% of all appeal applications in Nevada. But what do we know? All we can do is watch. So, grift on, Chili. Grift on. <laughs>